During a period ranging from about the 8th to 6th centuries BC, independent Greek city-states had been established all over the Mediterranean world and could be found in places ranging from modern-day Spain to Russia. Despite that, the only ones that most of us ever hear about are Athens and Sparta, and so in this video we're going to take a look at a lesser known but still highly influential city-state. It was known to the Greeks as Massalia, and is known to us as Marseille. In around the year 600 BC, a group of Ionic Greeks left their home of Phokia in modern-day Turkey with the mission of founding a colony. After a long and dangerous journey, the seafarers arrived at the estuary of the Tiber River, where they were greeted by the then rather insignificant Romans. Apparently, the two peoples got along well and soon decided to become allies. And so, after being given some supplies, the Phokians continued their journey northward, and ended up along the coast of Provence in modern-day France. There, they encountered the local Segobrigas tribe and were well received by their king Nanus. It just so happened that the Greeks had arrived on the very day that the king's daughter, Gyptis, would choose a husband. According to local tradition, the princess was to make the decision during a feast to which all local nobles were invited. And so, not anticipating the consequences, King Nanus invited the Greeks to the feast as well. When the time came for the princess to hand over the ceremonial cup, she indifferently passed by the local suitors, and instead gave it to Protus, the leader of the Greeks. Thus, the king was obliged to give away his daughter, as well as a piece of land on which Protus and his people would go on to found Massalia. Or at least, that's what later Roman historians tell us about how the city came to be. Although there certainly lies some truth to the story. The Romans and Massaliots would later become loyal allies, and since founding a center of trade would be beneficial for the local tribe, it's possible that they came to an agreement conceding land to the Greeks, and then sealed it by political marriage. In any case, the city was founded and grew rapidly to become the commercial harbor of most of the Gallic world, establishing trade routes as far away as the North Sea and even the British Isles. By the 4th and 5th centuries BC, the city had grown to a population of up to 50,000, equaling cities like Athens and Corinth on the Greek mainland. By then, it had even established its own colonies, such as Nikea, modern-day Nice, and Avenion, now known as Avignon, as well as modern-day Saint-Tropez, Monaco, and possibly even Barcelona. But as Massalia expanded, it took more and more land from the local Segobrigas, and eventually became a threat to their very existence. Thus, their new king, Comanus, decided to conquer the city in order to stop this trend. His plan was to sneak in a group of soldiers to the city during the Feast of Anthanestria. The men would hide under the foliage of decorated chariots during a parade, and then, once it had gotten dark, they would open up the city gates and let the Segobrigan army in. Unfortunately for them, though, their Trojan horse plan, so to speak, didn't work out that well. It's said that a Segobrigan woman, who was in love with one of the Greeks, had informed the city's leaders, and so well prepared, they attacked first and killed Commanus along with 7,000 of his men, nearly wiping out their entire tribe. After this event, the Massaliots became heavily militarized and managed to raid one of the strongest navies in the whole Mediterranean. With it, they successfully repulsed many attacks from the Etruscans and even won battles against Carthage, limiting their power to the sea around the Balearic Islands. The Massaliots also became known for their cavalry, which played a vital part in helping the Romans defeat Hannibal. Other Greeks noticed their change in attitude, and noted that the citizens of Massalia were always unsmiling, serious and strict. Despite that, the city did also become known as a center of culture and learning. In it, one could find a theater, an agora, as well as large temples of Artemis and Apollo. Massalia was also home to the famous mathematician, astronomer and navigator Pythias. He managed to almost exactly calculate the latitude of a city, and was the first scientist to observe that the tides were connected to the faces of the moon. He also led a renowned expedition along the Atlantic coast to the British Isles, and even discovered the mystical land of Thule. There, the sun hardly set in summer, and one could find ice drifting about in the sea. Judging from his description, he had probably ended up in either Iceland or Norway. On his way back home, he may also have discovered the Baltic Sea, but unfortunately, the book that he wrote about his journeys have been lost to us, and we only know of his accounts from other authors. But Pythias wasn't the only explorer from Massalia. There was also the lesser-known Euthemenes, who crossed the Straits of Gibraltar and sailed down the African coast all the way to modern-day Senegal. Being a trading nation, carrying new goods and ideas to the western Mediterranean, naturally, the cultural impact of Massalia and the region was quite significant. 
They spread writing as well as the art of wine and olive growing to the Celts, and their close neighbors even picked up Greek architecture and city planning. But they didn't just attract the attention of the Celts. The Romans looked up to the Masadiots as well, and it was not unheard of that Roman aristocrats sent their children to Masadia to be educated. Speaking of the Romans, after the defeat of Hannibal in the Second Punic War, they had begun to expand their military presence to the lands surrounding Masadia. Feeling threatened, a local tribe called the Saluvi then decided to attack the Masaliots, who were close allies with the Romans. Although the tribe was ultimately defeated, the Romans, as compensation for their help, more or less made Masalia into a subject state. They did, however, maintain a large degree of autonomy and continued to govern themselves as they always had, that is, as an aristocratic republic. In Masalia, the government was made up of an assembly of the 600 wealthiest citizens. They would then elect 15 magistrates, three of whom had executive power. But this would not last forever. In 49 BC, the city made the grave mistake of supporting Pompey in the Roman Civil War, and when his adversary, Julius Caesar, marched to Spain, he took the opportunity to capture the city, and then proceeded by taking all its treasures of art and annexed it into the province of Galatia Narbonensis. Thus, the nearly 600 years of Masadiot independence had come to an end. <laughs>